G'day folks, Tony again here for more Star Control 2. Off on our merry hyperspace adventure we go, uh, dear viewers, we've been sucked into this encounter as we're heading down towards Betelgeuse. Let's have a look and see what it is. Oh dear, there are three of them and I believe that these will be the core R. Let's find out. We are the Urquan core R. We cleanse our destiny. You will soon die. Make whatever rituals are necessary for your species. Uh, interesting. Looks like they're uh, feasting over a pit full of bones. Isn't that cheery? Uh, and we can ask them about that specifically. Uh, what are you hanging over? My trophy bone pit. In here is one skeleton from each of the races which I personally exterminated. I fondle these bones and recall the fine cleansing. Perhaps your bones will grace this pit momentarily. Unless they are accidentally vaporized. Oof, that's dark, and we're right amongst it. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit of a bother. Let's uh, let's give it a try with the old Earthling Cruiser and, uh, and find out how badly we're going to do. So you can see the ship all the way over there is called the Death 5. It's uh, also launching a number of of rather terrifying objects at us uh, that are very much going to destroy our ship. Uh, that didn't go so well at all, did it? Um, all right, well, I guess we try uh, Yompin or Screech. Well, Screech is what I'm feeling like doing right now, so how about we give that a red hot go? Um, so this is going to be something of a problematic exercise considering how much damage these things can do uh, so we did get a, re a resurrection there that's nice I think it's more a case of just running in and trying to hit them and I don't think this is going to be terribly effective um, I don't think it's going to be effective at all so maybe we just have to admit that uh, that we are in a huge amount of bother So it can't get hit by its own. Uh, it can't get hit by its uh, by its own things, so that's not going to help us in any way, shape, or form. And our batteries are super low. Uh, I think uh, recharging our batteries and having a hmm having a good recharge rate might be something that we need to do to fix up the dank. Uh, so we are going to have to reload the game, uh, and we may have to reload from a slightly different point. Uh, stay tuned, folks. Alrighty, folks, we're back, and we're going to uh, we're going to do the same save file, but we're going to do some manual maneuvering rather than heading in that straight line. And we're going to try and get away from all of these dots. There are so many of them uh, that I can't imagine that it's a particularly uh, positive thing. They're pursuing us. They're constantly spawning. Uh, that one there is certainly moving faster than the rest and getting closer and closer. Uh, so let's try and make our way here. Uh-oh, we missed it. That wasn't very good. Perhaps we should find out what this thing is because I, I suspect that it might be a slow landro. But at least here we are in Beetlejuice first. We can have ourselves a little bit of a side adventure. Uh, and hopefully that will pan out well for us. Okay, so Betelgeuse Planet 3 having two rather lovely looking moons. So you know the drill here. We have nearly two full cargo containers. It would be nice to return back to Earth uh, with a full batch of cool things. Uh, and this primordial world with Class 8 tectonics, which I'm assuming is going to have a bunch of biologicals on it. Yes, indeed. Uh, we're certainly not going to land on that uh, anytime soon. 
but perhaps orbiting around this primordial world are going to be some real gems. Uh, let's hope it's a literal gem as well. A treasure world. Ah, wonderful. Class 3 tectonics, that's very nice. This is definitely the kind of stuff that we want to be collecting. So let's go and do that exact thing. So I'm wondering, uh, there are a few planets in the in the galaxy here uh, where the names are, are potentially stars or, or systems that uh, that people may recognize. Betelgeuse, of course, being one of them, uh, presumably uh, based in a large part around the uh, the Hollywood feature film of the same name, even though spelled entirely differently. So maybe uh, maybe locations that are more recognizable tend to have at least one valuable planet on them uh, perhaps to reward people for heading towards spots uh, with which they are more familiar anyway enough of that waffle we have ourselves uh, quite a bit more cargo now maybe this uh, little red dot here will also have some groovy things radioactive world these have always uh, delivered for us so I'm very pleased to see that that is continuing going to have some trouble uh, spotting things with uh, these color combinations that we've got here it's amusing how used to the uh, the much faster ship I am now compared to when we first got it uh, sorry not ship uh, surface vehicle uh, didn't take all that long to uh, to do a little bit of a, a mental recalibration uh, and it's certainly making this process uh, a little less arduous oh I think we've got just enough here good work team beautifully done So I'm pretty happy with Beetlejuice so far, dear viewers. I uh, would assume that you are too. Although whether or not these others are going to be as fruitful, only time will tell. And presumably, some of you are going to be able to find out, uh, possibly travelling through time slightly faster than I am, if you're using any of YouTube's tried-and-true double-speed playback. There's a lot of stuff for us to collect here. Let's get amongst it. Delicious. I love me some acids. Easily the uh, the healthiest way to start the day. Mmm. <laughs> Oops. Got distracted by a different part of the screen. So this is quite a healthy, uh, quite a healthy dose of them here. If only every solar system we visited uh, had this many goodies in it. Oop. Okay, that's full. Pretty much four full batches here. I think that might be possibly one of the uh, the largest amounts of stuff that we have uh, that we have collected from any single uh, planet. So I'm pretty happy with that. Thank you, Planet 2. This is going to be a hard act to follow, Planet 1. I hope you've got your shit together. Ooh. Uh, well, that certainly answered that question in, uh, in plenty of style. Um, now, depending on who this is that we're about to talk to, clearly it's a race that has been enslaved by the Urquan. You can see there's a space station and a slave shield around the planet. Uh, but depending on who this is, uh, we may be about to encounter uh, peak 90s PC gaming. Uh, and if it's what I think it is, you'll see what I mean. So uh, this is something we're just going to have to bear with. Uh, but enough build up. Let's get on with it. Yep. Attention, unidentified space vessel. 
Be warned, this slave world and its inhabitants belong to the Urquan. I am Starbase Commander Jelana of the slave planet Gaia. Your ship is not responding to standard hierarchy identification sequences. You are therefore classed as independent and what? Is my monitor display correct? Is that a human commanding that vessel? Who are you guys? Uh, I really want to use that first line, but I can't because I've got to stick to the rules of, uh, of saying the name of my starship at every opportunity. I am Captain Clapton of the flagship Dank. Hello, Captain Clapton from the starship Dank. But you haven't answered my question fully. Why are you here? Where are you from? Has the slave shield been lifted from Earth? Are the Urquan finally defeated? Simply put, Captain, what do you want from us? Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's go with, uh, yeah. To be honest, we need your help to destroy the Urquan. Look, Captain, I like you. Even though you're an obnoxious human, I like you. In another time, we might have become good friends, perhaps more. But that's a fantasy and my job is dealing with reality. We're not going to do anything to jeopardize what we've got here. We've come too far, lost too much to ever risk losing Gaia, our new home. Don't get all judgmental on me, Captain. You don't know what we've been through. Uh, oh, it was Talana, not Jelana. Thank you, Font. Um, all right, so Commander Talana, what are you doing here? When the Urquan conquered us over 20 years ago, I was only a young girl living in Habitat 31. My older sister, Diane, was a Starship officer in the Space Patrol. She was part of the final defense at Raynet. She didn't make it back. When the Urquan caught us in open space, we all thought we were going to die. But then, instead of killing us, the Urquan offered us a choice. We could join the ranks of their combat thralls, or we could be slave shielded on our homeworld. Like the people of Earth, we chose peace. We became fallow slaves. When the Urquan told us to return to our homeworld, we explained that we had none. Urquan Master Nine explained that they had encountered this situation before. And if we would provide them with a list of our requirements, they would use their extensive astronomical data stores to find a planet for us. So we told them about Syrah, about the color of the its sky, about the abundant varied life forms about the fertility of the soil and seas. Less than an hour later, we received a terse message from Master Nine. We were to proceed to these coordinates and disembark. This was to be our new home. I don't know how or why, but our new world, Gaia, was everything we described and more. We'd been searching for a home planet for 75 years. And in the end, it was our enemies who gave one to us. I grew up on a small island off the main continent, and like all my people, we lived each day under the sick red glow of the slave shield. When the Urquan arrived seven years ago to refurbish and recrew the Starbase, I was selected as the new commander. Uh, sure. So what happened to you at the end of the war? When we first met your people, we'd been wandering through the stars for almost 75 years. Ever since the death of Syra, our home planet. We joined your alliance, and I use the word joined loosely because we had no other choice. The Vux were raiding our slow habitat columns, and we had nowhere else to go. We fought for survival, Captain, nothing more. When your people on Earth were defeated, the Alliance just plain fell apart. 
The Yihat and Shafiksti retreated to their native stars and didn't want us to follow. The Aralu, those creepy little weasels just plain bugged out, vanished. Leaving us alone with nowhere to go, smack in the path of the oncoming Urquan Armada. What were we supposed to do? Fight? Two thirds of our habitat fleet was unarmed. Many aren't even superluminal. We were going to be annihilated if we resisted, and we knew it. When the Urquan surrounded us and started giving orders, that all ended with, or die. We took them at face value. We obeyed. In exchange, they gave us Gaia, the planet below. It's a beautiful world, Captain. I wish I could show it to you. So don't misunderstand me. We love our freedom as much as anybody else. But we've got a good life here, and we don't want to lose it. Uh, hey, if you love your freedom, why won't you help? Like I said before, Captain, we would like to help. But we are unwilling to risk losing Gaia. Unless you can find a much more compelling reason for us to get involved, you are on your own. Well, dang. Uh, hey, Talana, would you tell me more about your people? Our bodies are very similar, Captain. Ha ha, except for certain parts, I mean. What I am trying to say is that our species are almost identical. Almost too close a match to be just a coincidence. Well, our cultural development is also mostly parallel. Like you Earthlings, we evolved a society from primitive tribes, whose main function were to protect themselves from the large reptiles native to our old world. The main difference between our two sets of cultures, the split in the paths of our development, occurred in what would have been your prehistory, say 5000 BC. In your world, the agricultural communities which formed from hunter-gatherer tribes were conquered by the more primitive but also more aggressive migratory herding peoples. This led to a particular kind of sexual and political dominance structure, which pervaded almost all of your Earth cultures until the early 21st century. On Syra, our only primitive migratory tribes were confined to our mountainous regions. Their herd beasts, the Ima, did not do well in, an agriculture, in the agricultural basins and plains, therefore the two cultures were isolated until much later. When the technological superiority of the farmers curtailed any major conflict. Uh, what was Syra like? It was our paradise, Captain. Our Eden. You would call our world Beta Copernicus. I, uh, one, we called it Syrah. You may wonder about our relationship with the Mycon, who now control that area of space. When we lived on Syrah, their sphere of influence was much smaller. We never laid eyes on a Mycon until we met them in, the, in combat during the war. But back to our beloved Syrah. Earth is the only world we know of whose variety and richness of life even comes close to Syra. Again, like so many other things about our two species, our worlds were very much the same. At least before you began encasing yours in concrete and plastic. Syra's gravity was a bit lighter than Earth's, and its day slightly shorter. Our diurnal cycle is therefore quite compatible with yours. Uh, what happened to Syra? Ah, the death of our world. This subject is very difficult for us, Captain. But I will try to recount those sad days. Like your solar system, ours had a large population of comets and asteroids. Large meteor impacts, though rare, were not unheard of on our planet. So it was not a total shock when an asteroid penetrated our atmosphere and hit the surface. What was odd was that unlike most other meteors, this one was not pulverized on impact. It penetrated the crust and indeed went all the way through to the mantle, causing a major caldera, kind of a super volcano. The earthquakes caused by the impact were severe. 
the magma pumped out of the caldera wrecked significant damage on the nearby terrain. But within a few weeks, it had cooled, forming a solid rock bandage over the wound. Within a few months, we had cleaned up the mess. The caldera was calming down nicely. And things were pretty much back to normal. Then, just over a year after the impact, all hell broke loose on the surface of Syrah. Huge calderas were opening all over, not just around the meteor impact, but everywhere. The scope of the disaster is impossible to imagine. Entire cities sliding into oceans of molten lava. Kilometer-wide sections of land being instantly pulverized by cataclysmic explosions. And clouds of poisonous gas and superheated steam creating a death shroud around Syrah. Uh, that wasn't a terribly fun story, but let's go with, come on now, isn't that outfit, knife included, a bit absurd? Maybe some other time, Captain, I can show you the hidden functionality of my uniform. Knife included. Uh, what happened to the males of your species? When Sira was destroyed, the only people who survived were in orbit and most of them were members of our newly established, mostly female, space patrol. From their ships, their orbital platforms and their lunar outposts, they watched Sira die. Within three days after the cataclysm began, the surface temperature of Sira had risen by almost 75 degrees, above the boiling point of water. It became clear that Sira, our paradise, our Eden, was gone. The survivors spent years in orbit They made a few missions to the surface and actually found a handful of survivors, but mainly they prepared for departure. The Space Patrol fitted makeshift drive units to anything that could hold air. Orbital factories, research pods, even hotels. When the fleet was ready, they left orbit and never looked back. The final population of our species was less than 10,000, with only 500 males. But they were the best and brightest of our people. For the next 75 years, our people wandered at sublight speed through the stars, looking for a new home. Uh, goodbye, Commander Talana. I will be back. Until then, Earthling. Um, so we need to find some way of convincing, uh, the Siren, who I don't think were ever actually named in that conversation, uh, to join us. Uh, but at the moment that does not seem like something that we're going to be able to do easily. So we are going to have to continue our adventure through space, uh, heading back to Earth. But let's save the game first uh, here we go Tony's game 29 so many save games and let's also go to the star map oh boy look at that Urquan sphere growing that's terrifying uh, so you can see we're right on the edge of Urquan space there. It's clearly why there were so many things uh, chasing us previously. But if we're going to try heading somewhere, then uh, Alpha Mense seems like a good approach because it is kind of on the way. So let's give that a red hot go. But I think there's going to be someone waiting for us as soon as we exit. Uh, and who knows how that's going to go. Oof. Indeed, we have been caught. Uh, hopefully, it's another Slylandro. Yay! Hey, how's it going? We come in peace. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Um, is there anything else that I can say? Attention, alien probe. You must cease hostilities or face our wrath. We haven't said that one before. Survival subsystem activated. Weapons engaged. Priority override. New behavior dictated. Must break target into component compounds. Indeed, let's uh, let's do this merry dance again, shall we? Uh, why not? 
Bring it on, woo. Oh no, oh no, we did it wrong. I picked the wrong thing again. Why do I keep doing that? It's because I'm not paying attention. Uh, I'm doing too much of the wrong kind of thinking. Any minute now. Oh, come on. Just shoot, please. Shoot anything effective. Oh, boy. That didn't go well. We're going to have to do an embarrassing reload here uh, in just a moment. Or maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll prevail and lurch our way back to Earth. <laughs> Somehow, I don't think so. Uh, we barely have enough to crew anything, so we just... Oh no, I accidentally survived with one person. Ah, oh, it's the worst of all worlds. All right. Um, well, with that being the case, uh, and because... Because I've botched this up so severely, we might have to go into our manifest. We'll go to our roster. Uh, we will recall some crew back to our ship. Uh, back to our flagship, rather. There we have it. So now we've got 18 crew. That's a little better than before. Um, and we'll go back to our navigation and we'll zip away. We're moving faster than that dot there on the map, so we should be all right. Uh, let's just duck our nose into this system and have a quick look at it. Uh, only two planets. I think it might just be worth having a quick poke around, seeing as we're here, but I think we're going to have to prioritize. Oh, boy, there's just moons everywhere. Um, we may have to prioritize heading back to Earth and recruiting after I once again used an Earthling cruiser against a Slylandro. Not a wise choice. Uh, unless this is positively brimming with amazing things, which it isn't. Uh, I don't even think we're going to bother landing here because it would be nice to get ourselves back to Earth, which is a fair way away. Uh, but considering how far away it is and considering how we're running low on fuel and most definitely on crew, I think that's probably what we're going to want to do uh, in very swift order. Now, that is a long haul, so who knows... Uh, what we might see popping out on the hyperspace map as we continue. And I think that by the time we get there, we are going to be getting pretty close to the end of the episode. So let's do a little bit of a recap uh, while we're on the way there. We know that we have the Siren who we just met who are underneath the slave shield on Beetlejuice. Uh, we might want to get them into the Alliance. We have recruited the Zok Fot Pick into the Alliance, although they are deep within Urquan space. We've met and defeated one Urquan ship. Uh, we got them completely smashed by some Korar uh, and reloaded the game. We've also had uh, some conversations with the Pekunk, who've given us some ships but aren't in the Alliance yet. Uh, and we also have uh, some other things that we're doing with... Uh, with uh, flying around, harvesting materials to try and get better gear from the Melnorm. So we're going to start making our way back uh, towards Earth here. Uh, and we're going to get ready to dock, but I don't think we're going to dock immediately. Uh, I think that is all that we have time for for this part of the Let's Play. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the episode, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to the channel if you'd like to be notified when other episodes are released. And please tell a friend if you think they might enjoy it and come back again soon for more Star Control 2.